all day we have spoken about um, how women's uh, health is taking a back seat but now we're going to talk about a topic where i'm afraid i can't say the same thing so it's uh, osteoporosis and i think this is the only area where the men's uh, health has taken a back seat so uh, we're discussing about women with diabetes um, in both stages premenopausal and also peri and postmenopausal and what should the uh, care pathway B. So starting with women with diabetes and premenopause, uh, looking at four aspects. So initially, uh, we need to look at the calcium and vitamin D and look at uh, optimizing the dietary calcium, sun exposure, and evaluative suspicion of vitamin D deficiency. Uh, Dr. Emmy, uh, what do you think we should be practically telling them, any woman who walks into the clinic? Yeah, if we go with the nutrition, I think that is the inner women who is pre-menopause, like a lady of 40 years who comes to me. So uh, it again goes with our theme that we have to educate to protect from the tomorrow. So uh, I start with the nutrition. If we see the Indian women, the probably the dietary calcium is somewhere around 500 milligram per day. So we need uh, uh, the tell patients that uh, they have to increase their dietary calcium intake. And it can be a dairy source, non-dairy source, non-vegetarian. Uh, we have seen in the previous talk had a complete dietary list for a vegetarian patient so we can impart those kind of education uh, another important thing is that we should try to catch people young it is if a mother came comes we should try to educate the daughter also so uh, catch them young then second about is the sun exposure uh, the sun exposure actually becomes very difficult because uh, the usual time for sun exposure is in the early morning hours whereas the time which is recommended is 10 to 4, 20 minutes and that too with less of clothes. So virtually the sun exposure as only source of vitamin D becomes a really difficult part because so much of pollution with cloths and all sunscreen on top of that so we have to actually look for vitamin D deficiency and supplement and treat that. Yeah. And of course we've spoken about exercises, weight bearing, muscle building and avoiding falls in these women, diabetes care, of course uh, optimize the A1C, avoid drugs like pyoglitazone, avoid drugs that cause falls uh, like thiazides and also one aspect that we've not spoken about or emphasized much is also be looking at their reproductive health. So we should be looking at their menstrual cycles, irregularity, the pregnancies, lactation period and body weight. In fact, uh, uh, the duration of lactation is an upcoming uh, risk factor for osteoporosis is now one of the few studies and uh, uh, if a woman has had multiple pregnancies and the duration of lactation is more so they should be screened for osteoporosis osteoporosis earlier than expected. Coming to the uh, women with diabetes peri and post menopause, so we have uh, three age groups here, less than five years post menopause or age less than 55 years. Uh, so before we go into this, uh, 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 Dr. Lily, do you think the age of less than 55 years which is uh, different from the NOF guidelines is apt to our population? Yes, uh, I think uh, in relation to Indian women, I think that is more apt. Uh, that's why it's mentioned as less than 55 years. Uh, because uh, we know that the uh, uh, menopause is earlier in uh, Indian yes. women compared to the West. So less than 55 years or uh, uh, postmenopausal is uh, less than 5 years, then we uh, again give them general bone health advice. It's calcium and vitamin D optimization, exercise, no smoking, limit alcohol and caffeine. If they are 5 years postmenopause or age is more than 55, we look at the FRAX and BMD. Uh, of course, we've spoken about uh, BMD here, so it can be falsely high in diabetes. Uh, so Dr. Emi, is there any way to correct for uh, BMD in diabetes? Yeah. So in case of diabetic patient, we don't take T-score of less than minus 2.5. It is l actually less than 2. So that should be treated. And also uh, in the case of diabetic, the BMD comes a uh, little on the higher side, but the fragility is more. So we have to no not just only look at the BM uh, BMD, we can also do the c associated calculation for the FRAC scoring. And otherwise for, as for other patients, if the patients have risk factors, and if there is a fragility uh, fracture or they had history of glucocorticoid intakes or they have RA, in those cases, it has to be start, treatment has to be started. 
Yeah. So, uh, concluding quickly, if the woman is 5 years post menopause or age is more than 55 years, do a BMD if less than minus 2.5, correct for diabetes, which could be a factor of minus 0.5. Rule out secondary causes and correct vitamin D deficiency. If it's in the osteopenia range, again, correct for diabetes, assist 10 year fracture risk, press other risk. Start specific treatment. If high risk, uh, continue follow up, not high risk, continue follow up. And if you're doing the fracs, one way to uh, account for diabetes is to replace uh, the uh, way we. Uh, put uh, yes for rheumatoid arthritis we can put yes for uh, diabetes instead of rheumatoid arthritis another important is that uh, other than avoiding the drugs uh, like SG, uh, these SGLT2 inhibitors though they don't have uh, much association we should also avoid hypoglycemia in the diabetic patient sometimes that can be the major reason for fall for example the patient who is on very high doses of sulfonylureas and the most important preventive aspect is to prevent fall. So all the changes in the indoor house and outdoor which can be do to prevent the falls is actually even more important than just doing the medical management. So that has to be taken care of. Very true. Okay. So uh, now uh, what are the uh, ways that we look at a woman what are the things that we look at women who have diabetes we basically divide them into like four compartments four ages like you know there is that that women as they age each uh, they they represent a different continent by a way of how they are so and each one is very different so like we have uh, women who are in the pregnancy stage who are in the premenopausal stage those who are planning pregnancy those who are uh, you know postmenopausal so uh, since we have covered the pregnancy in the GDM thing and we have covered the pre-pregnancy thing so let's talk about pre-menopausal uh, pre which would be a perimenopausal which would be around the age of 40 to 50 years of age what would be the uh, kind of goals or what would be how would you manage uh, that uh, age group? yeah uh, when a woman comes to us uh, for the first time with diabetes first and foremost thing is to find out whether a patient is in perimenopausal stage or already has achieved early menopause yeah. and uh, the transition period is the most crucial time in the management of diabetes because that's the time when they are put more at cardiovascular risks and yeah. other metabolic risks even like osteoporosis so uh, these are the factors to keep in mind and uh, look for those risk factors and also educate the patient regarding a strict uh, blood sugar control. Maybe uh, for the first time they have become diabetes because of this stress of uh, perimenopausal period. So that's the time uh, we need to be uh, educating them and also be, be very, very cautious in uh, controlling their blood sugar and monitoring the blood sugar as well as training uh, I mean, counselling their family members. True, very true. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Kivan, would you like to add something to it? Uh, yeah, we talk uh, always of microvascular and macrovascular right, complications, yeah. which we all of us very well look into that. B but the problem comes when we don't look for other things. We always talk of women health, the increased incidence of cancers and all. But we uh, ourselves usually don't. So there, there was one eye opener, a patient who was very well controlled with diabetes and she just comes with that, oh, I have been detected with a breast cancer and it was a large lump around four centimeter. At that point, it made me think that at least these are the patients whom we have window of opportunity to work them for the cancers. We know diabetics as such are more predisposed for the cancers. So all the women, we should actually look for the routine pap smearing, pap smears, because these patients are routinely coming to us. So we can just mm -hmm. guide them for yeah. pap smear mammography. Mm -hmm. And maybe and like now we are looking regularly for fatty liver. We should also look for what is the thickness of endometrium, ovarian right, size, right. and all these things. So we should be, I think, okay. regular. So, so basically, also we would advise them lifestyle. You know, if they are obese, yeah. they should should be advised to lose weight. The, the kind of diet, maybe they need to see a dietitian for that. Maybe they need we need to ask them what about the exercise level because a lot of times they think that exercise is for younger people or like how uh, you know they maybe they walk but there's no element of strength training in it uh, also what happens is around this time see the children are grown up they uh, you know are uh, busy with other things so they have a lot of time on their hands 
what do they do to you know uh, are, are they able to spend time for looking after themselves do they have some me time are they doing any uh, kind of meditation and things like that just to you know uh, control the stress that they have which is which usually occurs in your, as you age and things like that uh, you would like to add something to i think uh, usha ma'am has something to say yeah ma'am me yes yeah. yeah yes yes just yeah. one you know important thing that i want to wanted from this clinical care pathway is when a woman comes in to our office mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be newly diagnosed anybody um you know i think we should not um i mean everyone should not assume that they are either done with their pregnancies or they may not get pregnant so i just think that that is like a very important first question to ask because um uh, again like i said many people think that they cannot get pregnant uh, for whatever reason and so yes. if they are sexually active even occasionally um that contraception has to be absolutely you know something discussed with them after that whether they take it or not is another issue yeah. um and then if they are planning a pregnancy they uh, you know obviously we take them to pre conception care and pre gdm sure. so that is um, you know something that doesn't get done often and many of our medications that we prescribe are not safe in pregnancy and and so uh, unexpectedly uh, some 50 to 70% of all pregnancies are quote unquote unplanned or unintended so yes. we we have to be super yeah. careful about Th that there are uh, there are sometimes you know times when they have that period uh, you know when they uh, have a history of amenorrhea for a couple of months and they usually think that you know this is the end of it and they find out that they are that they are pregnant, pregnant. Yeah. and when you and use uh, medicines like yeah. metformin mm. it can actually induce ovulation oh, yes. so uh -huh. that's another thing they may yeah. not have gotten pregnant but the metformin will make them pregnant so sure. i'm just saying that it's just one more question to yeah, ask every definitely. woman yeah, and then if they are post menopausal that whole um, and somebody brought it up this morning also <laughs> not just think in terms of glucose control because um, it will be a real crying shame if we did a super job of getting their a1c down their glucose control but they got a fracture or a um, see i had four patient stories that you know we could not show today because of you know every session we ran over time so the last one the story that we were going to show was actually my colleague a neurosurgeon who um, developed um, colon cancer and she did not know she had the colon cancer she was anemic and they kept you know treating her anemia till actually the cause of the anemia was found and it turned out to be a colon a neurosurgeon diabetes and then she also developed very severe depression three just around covid mm -hmm. and um, you know her diabetes control was also bad which made the response to the co the colon cancer treatment also poor so i'm just saying that um, we 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 need to um, <clears throat> not look at just a1c or lipids or uh, bp but um, these um, that that's really the reason why we wanted this session and and i'm so glad that all of you uh, stayed behind and did this yes. you know, thank you so much okay so now now moving on it's a 90% of the pregnancies are unplanned, unplanned. yes yes that that's uh, that is so true ha galti se ho gaya become fit yeah galti ho gaya <laughs> now 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 let's move on to a woman who's uh, been about probably 5 years post uh, menopausal now in these women what would be the things that you would look for uh, dr lily you can start and then yeah in the women post menopausal again as we come yeah it's come to the same things that we have to look into the one is glycemic cardiovascular yeah. becomes an important issue at that point of time uh, then again with the bone health is a major issue at that time we have uh, dis discussed that we have to see for the bmds and uh, so, frac scoring and also for the mental issues at this oh yes, time yes, the 
all these uh, other associated for example in last session it was the fatigue so, so that fatigue, fatigue yes. and also unexplained weight loss many of our patients do come with unexplained weight loss yes. you rule out all the organic causes yeah That's only right. yeah and uh, as ma'am is saying that sarcopenia is a major issue mm. at this point of time so True. also changing the nutrition to more protein based and calcium based nutrition of course, and of course, we have to look for microvascular complications and what is the level staging. A lot of times, you know, in these times, you know, though we advise people for a, to have an uh, yearly eye checkup, most of them say, "Ki aye, chashme ka number badli kar diya, ho gaya." But you know, they don't even go to have the retinopathy evaluated. Similarly, even for the uh, kidney to uh, check whether they have microalbuminuria or not. Um, besides that neuropathy, a lot of them have neuropathic uh, symptoms which is probably the reason why they have balance issues, they fall, all those things need to be probably evaluated. And as you correctly said, you know, the depression and those kind of things tend to step in and um, those are. Dr. Lily, would you like to add something? Uh, yeah, I think uh, we need to have a sort of a guideline for ourselves. If a patient is beyond five years, they need to uh, undergo screening for microvascular right. and macrovascular uh, screening true. once a year at least. True, true. Yeah, and if right. they have uh, some kind of uh, one, any one of the indications, then accordingly we need to, you know, uh, screen them much more often. Yeah. And also, like we said earlier, that you know, cancer screenings yeah. and all these other things uh, which need to be done. Uh, maybe the bone, uh, the scanning for DEXA uh, infection. A lot of times, these people are now starting to, you know, uh, get a little immune suppressed due to whatever reason, or the immunity is reduced. So they are more predisposed to catching infections like pneumococcal infections. Yeah, and, vaccination. You know, vaccination, if required, needs to be done. Um, also, um, you know, the. Um, blood pressure, lipids, all this I think is part of routine care yeah. but still a lot of times these are missed because these are all silent um, things which uh, they don't It's good to have complain. a checklist. Actually. Yes, of course we must have a checklist and all but a lot of times you know even though we have a checklist and we take, keep educating but they don't remember that they have yeah. to come back within a year to have these things. A yeah. lot of times they come back yeah. two, three years later or maybe even five, six years later. Because their access to healthcare is, you know, a lot of times new need. need based. You know, if there's a problem, if they're sick, and then somebody from the family has to bring them, especially in the elderly, you know, when they're around 60, a lot of times they need somebody in the family to bring them to us. They don't, uh, you know, find it easy to come to us directly. So those are also yeah. issues which need to be addressed. Anything else you'd like to add? I think we've covered all the aspects. The uh, only thing we didn't talk about is infection prevention, yeah, also. That's the, right. uh, the uh, the vaccine, vaccine shots vaccine that we should be telling the, telling our patients. So yeah. with that, I think uh, we can wind up the session. Yeah. And thank you, thank you everyone for staying. Thank back. you. Thank you.